Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in the north woods of Minnesota. The project that I'm going to be working on this morning is the log bed that I started last fall. Now last fall I made the headboard and the footboard and I ended up just using 2x4s and pallet wood for the bed base and the bed rails. Today I'm going to work on the log rails for that bed and I thought well this is a good opportunity to show you how to make log furniture and in this instance a log bed not using the expensive tools that most log builders use but using a $20 part from Home Depot. So let's get started. This peg is longer than I ideally want it, and I'm sure I will end up shortening it for the final fit, but for now, I'm gonna keep it long so I have extra material to work with. So I've set my saw depth to correspond with the lines that I made for the pegs. Now I'm just going to go around the log several times and I'm going to make cuts in the log and then I will come in with my chisel and break those out to remove all of this excess material. What I'm going to do now is just take my chisel and start removing this material to expose this peg that I have previously marked out. I like to start taking pieces off more towards the edge instead of coming in straight. Uh, number one, you'll have a flat edge on your peg. And number two, sometimes that grain can pull to the inside and if you come in right away, you leave yourself less room to work with for air. Don't worry about getting too precise right away. First thing we're going to do is just kind of rough it out for the dimension and then we'll come through and clean that up later. And we're just going to do the same thing, working all the way down. Now that we have this base to work with, we can use that as our guide. And with our cuts, we've also set a guide for how deep to go on the peg. When I went around with the circular saw uh, and made all my cuts, it did a couple things. Number one, it helped remove the rough stuff. But number two, it also ended up giving me a built-in guide so that I know how deep to go because this saw blade is set at a known distance from the outside diameter of the log. So I can see here, because I can still see my cuts, that I actually need to take more material off of here. The other thing you can tell is there's a space between the log and the material, so I know I need to trim this off here. Here, I went a little bit deep and I left a little bit of a lip. 
But as you can see here, I could take some more off here, and here I'm about right. So you're gonna wonder, you may ask yourself, well, Terry, this is really rough looking. I kind of prefer it to be a little bit rough to begin with, because when I fit it into the corner post, I would rather it be tight and snug and trim off where I need to trim than have taken too much off and then have it just all loose and loosey-goosey inside the corner post and not have a good fit. You can see that this is really crooked, but that's okay because once I determine how far I want my peg to go into the corner post, because my corner posts are all each different sizes, so it's unique. I just can't do a standard size. So once I decide how far and how long I want my peg to be, then I will just come in with a handsaw and I will square that up into a square cut. It's a little bit thicker on the base than it is in the front. And that is just to kind of uh, give me a starting spot. Like I said, I don't really want to take too much material off because then it will, I'd rather have it be tight than just rolling around in there. Even though we're gonna wood glue it and screw it, I still want it to be as tight as possible. laugh at my saw. <clears throat> yes, it's a little rusty. I got it out of the dump. I got it for free. Here's a little cheater hack for you. Because you're just freehanding these pegs and they're not machined, they're going to have varying degrees of thicknesses and they're not going to be perfect. So rather than trying to get your project, rather than trying to get logs into the house or your project out to the yard to put together and find out it doesn't fit, a smart thing to do is to drill a hole with your Forstner bit, and this is going to be the size of the hole that you're going to build in your corner logs. So just make sure that your logs fit before you get there, because you might just have to do some trimming, and it's a lot easier to do it outside than it is to do in where your project is at. Plus it kind of can tell you where the high sides are for what you need to do to get where you need to be. The deconstruction of the bed has begun. When I first made the headboard and the footboard, I didn't have the log rails to complete the bed. So for short term, I just put some two by fours in for bracing. And of course, short term became, you know, a year later. So the project for today is I have two bed rails and I'm going to at least tie those into these. The headboard and the footboard are actually not glued together at all. They're just uh, put into place. So we're going to take them apart and we're going to glue them in properly, see if we need any screws, which I hope we don't. We shouldn't. I mean, we've, we've had it for a year with no support at all with it just put together with the frame. So I think we'll be all right. So I'm going to get my screw gun and we're going to get these braces taken off and then we're going to haul all of this outside, and I think we're going to work on it outside in the sunshine. That way it will be cleaner just for drilling the holes for the bed frame and, and whatnot.
I'm going to glue both sides and then I'm going to stick a ratchet strap on there just to uh, tighten it up as much as I can. All right, we'll put another one the opposite way and we should be good. Now I know how deep my holes are gonna be. So I will cut my pegs to length. All right, let's do a test fit, see how we're looking. This is the one that's a little warped. It's a little... The peg is a little wonky on that one. Perfect. And they'll level out, of course, when we put the other, put them into the other one. So my one mistake I made was I put Danish oil on these before I finished the whole process. And of course, now I have scuffs and screw marks and whatever. So I certainly could go back now and refinish them if I wanted to, but I don't know that I'm going to. I'll probably just put it all together and see what I can see and go from there. Came up 16 inches on those ones for my center point. Oh, this one's heavy. Yeah, this one's heavy. Dry fit these and see how we're looking. Looks good. Looks good. All right. Get these glued in, 
which I think we will probably do in the house. And then decide if we want to put in a cross brace. What my original thoughts were was that I would put in a couple cross braces in here, maybe three. You know what, maybe we'll bring maybe we'll bring it in, glue it, see how sturdy it is, and go from there. Sounds like a plan to me. The nice thing is we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be perfect now. We can change our mind ten times if we want. It's just free wood from the land and a little bit of time. If there's background noise, it's because I have the fan going. And oh my gosh, is it hot and muggy now. So two steps left. One, we're going to glue these. And then I have some long screws that are probably 10 inches. And we're going to come in from the backside into the peg. Hopefully, that's the plan. If we have any wood glue left, I was worried about that. On this bed, I'm going to use these probably, I don't know, 10 inch, 12 inch. I'm going to use probably these 10 inch, 12 inch screws. stability. So what I decided to do was I went to my local scrap yard and I had them cut me off a section of it's got to be close to one by one square tubing. I degreased it, ground the sharp edges, and I spray painted them. So the idea is these are going to be my supports and then I will just put a sheet of OSB or plywood on top of the rails and that will be my base support and that way I can put a mattress on here without a box spring and save me the money for the box spring. So what I need to do for these rails, and these rails are cut different sizes because as the log rails taper, my measurements weren't exactly the same. So what I need to do is cut notches in the bed rails and these will then sit flush into the logs. So that's the gist and I'm just going to knock out this little notch right here and the rail should nest right in there. That's the plan anyway. There. That's what I had in my mind. Perfect. Now to the others. The rails are installed and the bed is now ready for a box spring or in my case a sheet of OSB that's going to lay right on top of there since I'm not using a box spring and the mattress will go right on top of that.
Now what I really should almost do is put a couple of screws into the steel just to hold that firm. Well, you got a little action to it. But um, otherwise it's pretty uh, pretty stable, pretty solid. So I think we can go ahead and make the bed. And there you have it, a homemade log bed. So instead of spending over $100 on just the tenon cutter and even more for the drill bit, for a $20 Home Depot item, I made this bed. And I gotta say, I think it looks all right. This was my first try at making log furniture. And there's some things that I could have cleaned up a little bit better. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope you learned something along the way. That's going to be a wrap for this video. Take care. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the videos. And we will see you soon. Goodbye, $350 hole in the ground. We will see you soon. Goodbye, tiny cabin.